Hi, welcome to uh, Human Computer Interaction. And uh, in today's uh, lecture, I want us to look at Norman's model, Norman's model of interaction. And we shall progress as follows. Uh, I'll do a little introduction on who Donald Norman uh, was, and then we'll move on to look at uh, the design principles, you know, that um, uh, he proposed, and uh, thereafter we'll look at Norman's interaction theory, and then phases in human computer interaction in the human computer interaction process, and we'll later divide these phases into what is known as the gulf of evaluation and gulf of execution. All right. Now. Uh, that's the gentleman there, uh, Donald Norman. Uh, he did quite a lot of good research on user experience and uh, uh, user interface design in particular. Okay, and he was the former user experience architect at Apple. Now, who is this man? Uh, Donald Norman was uh, one of the most notable researchers in the field of human computer interaction and user-centered design and uh, he provided uh, six key design principles which have become very useful yeah and um, Norman's idea is that devices okay computers mobile phones um, wh whatever computing device we can talk about uh, his idea was that uh, the interfaces of these devices should function correctly and be intuitive and easy to use okay when a user looks at the interface he shouldn't be grappling wondering what am i supposed to do so the screen design itself should be intuitive you know giving you an idea suggestion uh you know uh, where you automatically so to speak know what you need to do just by looking at an interface it should be simple enough and he explained this through um uh, six principles okay and so the six principles that revolve around this idea as follows uh number one uh it is about the principle of visibility okay users should know just by looking at an interface what their options are and how to access them you know it, it is a challenge uh of course to make every everything visible within a limited screen space you, you you can't put every button every label every caption there so here the principle is it is important to only include options that are really needed that are really essential so out of the range of options you may have of, of what you want to include in the design only make those which are essential visible for that particular screen okay and another thing is feedback the user must receive feedback after every action they perform you know to let them know whether or not their action was successful have you ever used uh, an interface where you perform an action and somehow um, you know you don't know whether the action has been successful or not the screen is not responsive you know there is no feedback of some sort then you just guess uh, oh, okay, I think uh, uh, this isn't do, uh, or maybe here I've, uh, I've made a mistake, that is why it is not responding. It shouldn't be like that. If I've performed a wrong action, the screen shouldn't be mute. It should be able to give some sort of feedback to say uh, you're doing it the wrong way or uh, uh, press this button if you want to perform this action or maybe the action you've performed is an illegal action. The other thing which is the uh, third principle is known as affordance and this refers to the link between how things look and how they are used so when you look at uh, a certain icon what that picture is or uh, the way that icon is designed you know there should be some link between how it looks and what actually it needs to uh, uh, what it performs or what it is used for so for example, a coffee mug has high affordance because you instantly know how to hold it just by looking at it, okay? So this is an example of how a coffee mug looks, okay? Or a cup, when you look at uh, its handle, you know 
intuitively what that uh, is used for. So the same is true for digital applications. The design should be intuitive enough, you know, so that the users will know how to access their des desired information just by looking at the interface, okay? So if, uh, for example, I look at uh, um, an icon which is usually used for texting or typing something, it somewhat looks like, you know, a document with some lines of text. And so whether I'm using an Android application or a Microsoft Windows application, um, such applications usually have uh, uh, an icon which looks uh, similar across platforms. Number four, mapping. Mapping is the idea that in a good design, the controls for something will closely resemble their effect. Okay, This is best understood with a vertical scrubber. It tells you where you currently are. And the page moves down at the same pace and uh, sensitivity as the vertical bar. So um, if an icon or a feature is for scrolling, you know, the way it looks, its movements, it really mimics uh, the actual thing that will happen. Okay. And so that is what this example is all about. You know, uh, a scrubber will tell you where you, you, you currently are and the pool page moves down at the same pace. So when you take your mouse pointed where the scrubber is, you know, it is literally like you are moving something. The other thing is constraints. Constraints restrict a particular form of user interaction with an interface. Uh, this is essential because the user could become overwhelmed with the range of possibilities available through an interface. So when you're designing an interface, there should be some limitation of what the user can do within the framework of how that interface needs to be used. Okay, and an example of a constraint is an online form that does not allow users to enter letters into a phone number field. Okay, so some sort of validation check where if you want uh, a field to only accept uh, 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 numbers, then put some sort of restriction so that uh, when someone enters a wrong type of text, you know, it won't allow that. Yes, and the other thing is, um, uh, the other thing is consistency. Uh, an interface should be consistent, you know, the way the features are arranged. Um, if uh, tabs or buttons of the website appear on top, let it be like that on every web page. If they have a particular design color, let it be consistent on every uh, web page. Okay, not when a user opens the home page, um, the tabs appear on top. On the second web page, they appear on the left side. So people learn new things and manage uh, uh, better when they recognize patterns. If similar looking things do not produce a similar output, the user is bound to become frustrated, you know, uh, because uh, every page, for example, uh, going by the example I gave of a website, if it looks different and uh, 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 every time a person wants to interact with a certain feature, it produces a different effect. You know, even when it looks similar on another page, that would be very frustrating and it would be difficult to learn how to interact with such a system. Yeah, so like the example I just gave here, if a website's buttons are protruding boxes with labels on them, then all of the website's buttons should look just like that. So similarly, if uh, a backward arrow denotes the back uh, button, then it should not be changed to something else because uh, that would be inconsistent with what uh, the user has learned. So it is easier to learn things when they are consistent every time they produce the same effect and you know. And so those are the design principles. But now let us quickly look at um, what is known as uh, Norman's interaction theory. Now usually when we're talking about uh, the relationship humans have with a computer vis-a-vis uh, um, -vis, uh, human interaction interface, we normally would illustrate it like this, where you write human, interface, and computer. 
okay interface of course referring to this very feature that enables the interaction between the computer system and the human being but this illustration is very limited it hides uh, a lot of details uh, so the diagram does not illuminate much and um, Norman's 1988 book the design of everyday things is one of the first appearance of the phrase user-centered design and in this uh, Norman you know he uh, gives us a better illustration okay so Norman viewed the interaction as a cycle with two components uh, execution and evaluation and this is how he illustrates it there's a user here then there's a system uh, there is an action of execution and then the second phase uh, which he referred to as evaluation. Uh, what does he mean by this? Let us look at this in detail. Execution consists of the following activities. So the execution phase involves a user first establishing a goal. Okay, what does he want to achieve? And um, the goal, you know, um, forms an intention. You know, uh, what does the user intend to do? And from that, from the intention, from what you want to achieve, you know, an action will be specified. You know, an action that will lead to the fulfillment, uh, the fulfillment of the intention. And then, well, then the user executes the action. And so from the user's perspective, the user first establishes a vague goal. Okay. Uh, it does not have... Uh, uh, clear specifics, but there's a goal. He wants to achieve something and the user specifies that goal by forming an intent Then the user can determine a sequence of actions. So what do I do in order for me to achieve this intention? Okay, and the above steps make up what is known as the gulf of execution and we'll look uh, at that shortly in detail But let us look at what is involved in evaluation Evaluation consists of perceiving the system state. So after you've performed an action, well, you, you, you perceive what is happening with the system. Okay, and next you interpret uh, the state. Uh, and after looking at what the system is doing, well, you're going to evaluate. Is this achieving my intention or not? So after the system responds, or maybe before, before if the system is slow, the user perceives the new system state, which the user interprets and evaluates with respect to the user's intended goal. And these three steps are what uh, comprises what is known as the gulf of evaluation. Now let us look at that in detail. Gulf of evaluation and gulf of execution. What's the difference between the two? Uh, this is summarized in this diagram. So you have the user, you have the system. Gulf of evaluation, here what you're looking at is what is the current state of the system? And then the gulf of execution, how do I use the system? Now, what do we mean by this? Let us break it down. The terms gulf of execution and gulf of evaluation were introduced by usability researcher Donald Norman. They are concepts that are essential to understanding the interaction between humans and computers. Now, let us look at the gulf of execution. This refers to the degree of ease with which uh, a user can understand the current state of a system. And a simple example we can talk about this is uh, a system which has a switch. And you know that if I press down this switch, it goes on. Otherwise, it's off and um, by looking at that you immediately know what is the current state of the system you know by looking at what feedback the light is giving you now uh, looking at the gulf of evaluation here we are looking at the degree of ease with which a user can perceive and interpret whether or not the action they performed was uh, successful okay and um, looking at the previous example we've looked at again it is fairly easy you know to to understand what is going on whether your action was successful or not and um, again 
it means the gulf of evaluation is small. But then let us give an example of a large gulf of evaluation. Imagine you are using um, an application which uh, when you're performing an action for it to show that there is something happening in the background, it shows a wheel which is turning and I think you've seen applications like that. Maybe you are installing something or you performed a certain action uh, or maybe it wants to communicate to you that it is loading or it is uh, processing something in the background. It, it just shows a wheel going around. Now, how easy is it for you to understand whether what you've done is successful or not? You, you really don't know whether the screen has just frozen or really there is something which is happening in the background. So large gulf of evalu evaluation um, means, uh, you know, it is not easy uh, for you to, to ascertain or to judge whether your action is successful. What uh, could be better is to use an icon of a progression bar, okay? Uh, for example, when you are doing software installation, you, you have that progression bar and you're able to see, is it at 50%, 60%? When you see the bars are moving, well, you know things are happening and that means the gulf of evaluation is small, okay? So that's about what we wanted to cover in this topic. See you in the next session.